The abolition of quotas resulted in an increase in the volume of milk being produced and needing processing. The Mallow processing plant has undergone considerable expansion in the last number of years. The increased volume of milk being processed has resulted in an increase in the volume of wastewater going to the effluent treatment plant. Some of the technology in use in the treatment plant, which was built in the 70s, is not best suited for the increase in wastewater needing processing. Mal odors were generated in the plant. It was not possible to capture and treat all these odors without affecting the processing capability of the plant. So, we had to look at a redesign of the effluent treatment plant. We needed a plant that would be best in class, meet all the discharge license parameters, future-proof the Mallow site, be scalable in its operation, be robust where we would have confidence in the process, a plant that wouldn't generate order, a plant that would have minimum running costs, minimum chemical usage and sludge production by a very efficient nutrient removal process, a plant that would fit in the existing footprint and a plant that could be integrated into the existing plant easily. When we engaged with Dairy Gold, we considered a granular activated sludge as, a, as an option, an anaerobic versus aerobic solution, and finally we, we agreed to proceed with a BNR removal process based on anaerobic, anoxic and anaerobic steps. Further, we decided to go with a dual streaming solution to allow for flexibility and modularity in the future. Once we had the process solution designed, obviously we had the tank size, we, we knew all our um, parameters. We did have to consider a number of constraints. One was that we were working on a floodplain, so obviously the equipment had to be kept above the flood level and also we had to maintain a footprint within the same footprint as the existing plant. The most important issue was the constructability of the plant. The plant had to be constructed within a very tight programme and also we had to maintain the existing plant in operation. We selected to construct the plant in two phases. We constructed phase one whilst maintaining the existing plant in operation and once we had phase one commissioned, we then demolished the existing plant and started the construction on phase two. The next issue was energy efficiency. We considered a number of blower solutions and we finally opted for the turbo, turbo blower solutions which have proved to be very efficient. The power supply to the site had to be upgraded to satisfy the power requirements. We opted for an MV power supply where we installed a new transformer and a new uh, MV switchgear and wiring. Another issue to consider was the noise. The turbo blowers in the acoustic enclosures satisfied the noise limits for the site. It was very important to consider reuse of the existing infrastructure on site where possible for budgetary reasons. EPS installed an order removal system a number of years ago and we reused that order abatement system and we connected the new plant onto that order abatement system. There are four clarifiers on the site in very good condition and we reused those clarifiers for the final settlement process. To summarise briefly, the end product has proven to be a robust and efficient treatment plant. It has complied with all the requirements including the five left standards, the order limits, the noise limits and it is also designed to accommodate flooding on the site, which was a huge issue in the past. The other problems at the Mallow site are now eliminated. The plant is modular, it's dual streaming, so it can accommodate varying peaks in the dairy industry, and it also can be upgraded easily with one additional cell. The layout of the plant, all pipes and equipment are surface mounted. It's very easy to operate and maintain for future operators. Phase 1 build started in the middle of May 2021. By the middle of July 2021, there was sufficient concrete in place to allow EPS to start installing their equipment. Phase 1 was put into operation in the middle of October. That's a five month build and commission window. At that stage, we removed the old plant and start the construction of phase two. Construction was completed in December. The equipment 
GPS equipment was installed by the end of January and the plant, second lane of the plant was brought into line at the end of March 2022. The short construction window meant that Dairy Gold had the full capacity of the plant available for the entire 2022 season.